great pleasure to welcome all of you to the 22nd annual Crossword event. Although we regret that the pandemic prevents us from being together in person this year, we're so pleased to join together virtually. Let's hope that next year is a different story. Now, as for everyone's favorite enigmatologist or puzzle master, this is a man who has never needed an introduction here in Westport. For many years now, dating all the way back to 1999, we have looked forward to his annual pilgrimage from New York to Westport to facilitate this cherished crossword event. He is the world's only academically accredited puzzle master. He sold his first puzzle at the age of 14 to venture, and at 16, he became a regular contributor to Dell's puzzle publications. He went on to study at Indiana University where he designed his own major program, which in 1974 led to his one of a kind degree in uh, enigmatology, the study of puzzles. He has been the puzzle master for NPR's weekend edition Sunday since the program start in 1987, crossword editor of the New York Times since 1993, and the editor of Games Magazine for 15 years. To date, he is the author and editor of over 500 puzzle books. A passionate and skilled table tennis player, uh, Will is just telling me that he's played something on the order of uh, 8,000 consecutive days of table tennis, which is remarkable. He is the owner and director of the Westchester Table Tennis Center in Pleasantville, New York, the world's largest table tennis facility. He also happens to own the world's largest puzzle library, numbering more than 25,000 puzzle books and magazines dating all the way back to the year 1533. Oh, and he also happens to play the starring role in the most popular documentary film ever made, Wordplay. The man I am referring to is of course, Mr. Will Shorts. Will, I turn the virtual podium over to you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot, Bill. It is great to see you again. It's great to be back. You know, the Westport Library is a special place, uh, a great library and just a great town. Um, and it's a pleasure and an honor to be with everybody. I'm watching your comments at the side here. Uh, and thank you for everyone who's coming, who's come. So let me tell you what we're gonna do today. Uh, first, I'll tell you about some of my favorite New York Times crosswords of the past few months. Um, then there'll be a chance for a Q&A if there's anything that you'd like to ask me about crosswords or anything else. Now is your time. And then I will have some original word puzzles for you, like I usually present in person at this annual event, but this time we'll be doing it virtually. And then after that, we have a puzzle for you to solve. I brought a crossword for you to solve. I think you've already downloaded it. Um, it's from the 2007 American Crossword Puzzle Tournament, and it's by Mike Shank, uh, and I'll tell you more about that later. But first, let me tell you about some of my uh, favorite recent puzzles. And uh, I want to start by talking about this, this, most, this week that we're just finishing. Monday to Saturday in the New York Times is Black Puzzle Makers Week. It's the first time we've ever done this, and it's the first time we've ever been able to do this. Uh, but we have a growing number of African-American crossword contributors. And uh, a couple of them are longtime regulars like Eric Agard and Cameron Austin Collins. Uh, but we have some more recent ones. And on uh, Monday, we had a high school senior in New Jersey who is making her debut. Uh, and it's really been an exceptional week. And there's a, it's not really a one-off either. On Monday, we have a, another debut from another um, black crossword constructor. And the following Monday, we're gonna have yet another. So it's a, a growing number of uh, African-American crossword contributors for a growingly, an increasingly diverse group of contributors. But let me tell you about some puzzles besides those. Um, on January 7, on a Thursday, there was a cool puzzle by Sid Siva Kumar and Matthew Stock. If you're a New York Times solver, you may remember this. Uh, the key answer in the bottom of the diagram was strike that. And there were four answers that contained the consecutive letters T-H-A-T, like with a twist has T-H-A-T consecutively. Uh, don't hate 
has THAT, felt hats, and death at a funeral. And in each case, those letters THAT were to be replaced by X's, as in the, the revealer said to strike that. So that was a, a cool, very Thursday-ish idea. Let's see, on December 22, there's a puzzle I liked a lot. It was a Tuesday by Amy, Amy Yanni and Jeff Chen. Uh, the black squares in the center of the diagram were in the shape of the numeral nine. Uh, there were some circle letters near the top or near the nine that spelled cloud, as in cloud nine. And then the grid was just filled with nice upbeat answers like sheer bliss, happy place, wonderland, cheers, Shangri-La, uh, and the word emoji was clued with a happy face. You know, that's the kind of puzzle. It was a fresh idea. First of all, I liked it for that, and it just made you feel good as you were solving. Let's see, on December 8th, there was a Tuesday puzzle by a new contributor, Enrique Henestroza Anguiano. The central entry across the diagram was polar opposite. And around the grid, every answer on the edge had its opposite on the other edge. So work uh, was one across. Well, the last across answer was play. Similarly, above and below were opposites, hard and easy, depart and arrive, old and new, and wet and dry. That was a really elegant idea, nicely interlocked, and that was on December 8. Let's see, December 3rd, there's a th another Thursday puzzle I liked a lot by Jake Halperin. And this was a Thursday, it was a tricky one. Uh, the word bipolar came down, and um, if you if you sort of separate the parts of the letter B and bipolar, it sort of forms the digits one and three. Um, and so coming off the B of bipolar was Friday the 13th with one three appearing in the same square. Okay, was that clear? So there was another answer, abets, A-B-E-T-S. If you split that B into the that vertical line and then the part at the right, it makes the digit that makes the number 13 at cross to follow 13 and blunts with the b splitting became uh, in the across became oceans 13 and at the bottom of the puzzle was the revealer unlucky break and there's one more i'll tell you about maybe you remember this so it was a thursday puzzle by derek angel on november 19 and the key answer near the bottom of the diagram was W-H-L-F-F-R-T-N, which is Wheel of Fortune without the vowels. Also in the diagram was M-R-V-G-R-F-F-N, Merv Griffin without the vowels as the creator of the show. There was also P-T-S-J-K and V-N-N-W-H-T, uh, who are co-hosts of Wheel of Fortune. There was also R-S-T-L-N, clued as the group of six given for free. Of course, there's only five letters there, R-S-T-L-N, but that is uh, uh, not counting the E, which you're usually given in the final round. And B-N-K-R-P-T was a bad place to land on Wheel of Fortune. And coming down the middle of the diagram was Can I Buy a Vowel, which summed everything up. So that shows, uh, you know, a puzzle doesn't have to be really hard to be clever, interesting, fun, memorable. Those are some of the uh, things that have stuck out with, with me during the last few months. I'll tell you, uh, before you come to ask me any questions, uh, let's see, what was the date of the vowel puzzle? That was November 19. Yeah, keep asking your questions. Um, and uh, the, uh, the New York Times crossword group team has uh, really expanded recently. When I started at the job in 1993, it was just me, basically. I did uh, all the editing. I typeset the puzzles. Uh, I had my group of test solvers. I did all the correspondence. It was a one-person job. And over the years, the job has just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, I had some assistants for a while. Then Joel Fagliano came and joined me. Uh, then Sam Azerski joined the team. So there were three of us for a while. And then last year, uh, the Times in a push for diversity and just more help in the 
puzzle department has increased it some some more. So we've added Wenna Liu, who is a, a really talented young puzzle maker, and Tracy Bennett, who lives in Michigan, uh, another talented puzzle maker and now an editor. So there's five of us who are the core of the creative team, and the Times has added uh, Everdeen Mason as an editorial director, sort of uh, sort of acting as a publisher of the group or overall manager. Uh, and she is a an African American editor in Washington D.C. Um, and it's interesting, you know, since the pandemic and we're all working separately. Well, it used to be Sam and Joel came to my house. Uh, and I live in Pleasantville in Westchester. They used to come to my house and we'd all work together. Now, of course, we don't work together. We work by email, uh, Zoom or Google Hangout, um, telephone, and so on. Um, and uh, since we don't have to be geographically in the same place anymore, then we've expanded geographically. Tracy lives in Michigan. Everdeen lives in uh, Washington, D.C. Um, and Sam and Joel both work from home. So uh, um, it's, uh, uh, you know, the puzzle department just keeps getting bigger and bigger. It's a very successful part for the New York Times. All right, that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, is there anything you would like to ask? And I, uh, I think Jennifer is going to step in. Uh, hey, Jennifer. Hey. So um, yes, we do have some questions um, in the ask. Oh, a I can't hear app. you. Is that me or you? Uh, I should be able to be heard. Um, can anybody else not hear me? Okay. All right. I, I'll, uh, Will, can you hear me now? Still can't hear you, Jennifer. Oh my! This could be oh, difficult. Well, what's wrong here? Oh. Hmm. Huh, huh. Okay. Have you muted your? How can computer? I not hear her? Um, okay. Well, while we're waiting for Will for a second, I just want to let everybody know. Thank you all for putting in the chat that you can hear me. Um, the crossword puzzle for this eve for this afternoon will be sent out to you and shared later. So please hold off on that for right now. You will get the password. I promise you. Um, so. Don't worry about that part. Uh, we're just gonna try to figure out why Will can't hear us right now. Um, so, all right. All right, if, okay, so here, we're just gonna, if everybody could just hold off on the chat for a second. And we'll just go here. Okay, so hold on one second. I'm okay, just going works. to. Okay, so I'm going to read this to everybody. I believe today, uh, oops, you will have played table tennis 3,048 days consecutively. Congrats on sustaining this continuing record. Um, and the person would like to know if you could share a few words about table tennis Hall of Fame legend George Braithwaite. So, should I answer the question about George Braithwaite? Yep. That yes. Like yeah, uh, George Braithwaite. Um, for those who don't know table tennis, he is one of the all-time greats of American table tennis. He was on the ping pong diplomacy team in 1972, I think it was 1971 or 1972. Uh, he was one of the top American table tennis players, he worked for the United Nations, and uh, he was on the U.S. team that went to the World Championships in Japan that year. Um, and the United States and China, Communist China, had no relations, were not communicating at all. Uh, and Mao Zedong thought this was an opportune moment to have rapprochement. So uh, while the U.S. team was in China, an invitation was sent to the U.S. team. To, uh, oh, sorry, while the U.S. team was in Japan, China sent an invitation for the U.S. team to come to China. Um, and uh, this was high stakes diplomacy. Uh, the U.S. team did go there. 
they put on exhibition matches. The uh, Chinese player, of course, uh, table tennis is China's national sport, and they are far and away the best country in the world in table tennis. Um, and uh, there were exhibition matches across China. Uh, everyone, uh, they had never, much, people in China had never even seen Americans. Um, and very nicely, in one of the exhibition matches, they let one of the, they let the American win. Um, and George was on the team, uh, and uh, the team was on the cover of Time magazine. Uh, and afterward, the Chinese team came to the United States for a tour. And uh, shortly after that, the United States and China reestablished diplomatic relations. Uh, George Braithwaite was actually is my hero in table tennis. Uh, he died uh, a few months ago um, and he, in his mid 80s, I believe, or late 80s. And even after all this time, he still played table tennis and he was still a darn good player. And it's my goal to continue playing table tennis as long as George does, as long as George did. Great. So uh, the next question is from Diane Lohman. Uh huh. So, how's how's the pandemic changed uh, the way I do puzzles? Well, a couple answers to that. I mentioned one earlier that uh, Sam and Joel no longer come to my house, so we work virtually, and uh, it's actually worked quite well. You know, we do Google Hangout meetings, we do Zoom, we talk on the phone, we have email, we have uh, five people now, editors, um, with Winna. I think Winna and uh, Tracy are the first line looking at contributions. And this is the other big change since the pandemic. The number of submissions to the New York Times has exploded. I used to say we get uh, around 100 submissions a week. We're now getting 175 to 200 submissions a week, and we can only publish seven. So uh, the competition to, be, to get an acceptance is fierce. Uh, but Tracy and Winna look at the puzzles first, and if they think that there's any possibility for a puzzle, then they will show it to Joel and Sam. Uh, and if they also think it has a possibility, then they show it to me. And we have meetings twice a week uh, via Zoom or Google Hangouts where uh, they post the puzzles and we all talk about them and uh, we all come to a decision if uh, we like the puzzle or not and if we think it's worthy of appearing in the times. So what's changed? Actually, you know, not that much has changed for me because I've worked at home since I started at the Times in 1993. Uh, I get up when I want, I go to bed when I want, I work when I want. Uh, it's nice having that flexibility. Great. Um, Let's so see, the next are any is... of the puzzles really bad? Yeah, there are a lot of bad puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the thing is, there's lots of really good puzzles. Uh, the ones that are really good, we can decide on quickly. We all look through and think, yeah, that's fantastic. That's a yes. And the ones that are not good, we can decide quite quickly. It's the ones in the middle, especially uh, if it has, if it's really good in parts, and then there's some things we don't like. And so we think about, uh, you know, is this puzzle revisable or should we just accept it as it is? Yeah. We had a big debate. We just had a big meeting yesterday, uh, and we had the discussion of a puzzle that had a very clever theme, and it has the answer Dr. Black, D-R-B-L-A-C-K, which I personally did not know, and that crossed absit, A-B-S-I-T, which I didn't know, and uh, also crossed Kondo, K-O-N-D-O, who I do know, but I think a lot of solvers won't. And I think that uh, that conglomeration of entries could cause problem could cause solvers problems. So we talked it all over it a lot. We finally decided it's such a clever theme, and this part of the grid cannot be changed. So we're going to accept the puzzle. And the clue for Doctor Black uh, will say Cluedo character uh, with a title and a color in his name. So even if you don't know Doctor Black, that should be enough hint for you to get the answer. Let's see, someone loving the star logic puzzles. Thank you, the two not touch puzzles. All right, well, I'll tell you, 
Uh, that's one of the things I'm proud about, uh, sort of discovering. I didn't invent the puzzle. It was invented in the Netherlands. Uh, it appeared in the World Puzzle Championship uh, for a number of years. And uh, when I was at the World Puzzle Championship in Germany at the end of, in October 19, uh, sorry, in October 2018, there's this puzzle uh, I found called Star Battle, which I was crazy about. So uh, last spring, the New York Times decided to increase the amount of space uh, to its puzzles. It's got the crossword and it's got this, the Ken Ken, but they had space for some new puzzles. And, uh, you know, what should, what should we do with that space? I recommended doing Star Battle, or what I call it is To Not Touch. Uh, it's a pure grid, it's a pure puzzle of logic, very addictive. Uh, and uh, if I had time, I would do to not touch puzzles all day. And I'm glad to hear that other people like it as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, right, right, Natic is right. Let's see, what else? Any suggestions for those looking to start creating their own puzzles? Yeah, that's a number of answers to that. First of all, uh, if you go to the the wordplay column on the New York Times website, there is an, a series of articles on crossword construction. You'll find that helpful. Um, second, there is a great book you can get by Patrick Berry that you can download for $10. And uh, what is it? If you Google his name, Patrick Berry, B-E-R-R-Y, uh, you'll see uh, whatever the title is. It's a crossword constructor's handbook, and uh, it's uh, you should download that. And that is just f answers virtually every question you'd want to know about uh, crossword construction. And then there's two other things you might do if you want some help. There's a a uh, a page on Facebook for, uh, that's called Crossword Collaborators like crossword collaborators and uh people there are very helpful post your question people will help you people will uh offer to mentor you or collaborate with you um so i recommend that uh at what point did thursdays become the particularly tricky puzzles yeah that's a great question okay first of all a lot of people seem to think that uh, thursday in the new york times is trickster day and no uh, Thursday is harder than Wednesday and it's easier than Friday. That's all it is. I just have a, a increasing slope and difficulty. It so happens though, Friday and Saturday puzzles are themeless. So if you have a tricky theme, naturally that it's going to occur on Thursday because that's the hardest themed puzzle of the week. Um, I try to, I don't want it just to be trickster day though. I don't want you to open your Thursday New York Times and think, Okay, what trick are they going to give me today? I don't want you to think that. I want you to think, okay, this is going to be a challenge today. Maybe there's a trick. Maybe there's not. And if there's a trick every Thursday, then you're not tricked anymore because you're expecting it. I'd like it to be a surprise. Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> oh, okay. Someone says, I'm always puzzled when words that I see in the crossword aren't valid in spelling bee. Um, yeah, well, they go by different, uh, we have different rules. Spelling bee goes by what is common and not by what's in the dictionary, but by what we consider, in our opinion, common. Uh, and of course, there are some uncommon words appear in the New York Times crossword because they're short and they have lots of vowels. So we use them. Um, uh, you know, well, agi agio, agio, eh, I try not to use that. Like, we'll take olio, O-L-I-O. Very common in crosswords because it's so useful. I'm not sure if that works in uh, spelling bee or not. Uh, and how many people solve spelling bee? I don't know. I don't know about that. It's a lot. It's a. I think the spelling bee is as popular as the crossword now. Uh, yeah, spelling bee was my invention, so that's uh, something I take proud pride in. Let's see what else have we got here. Have you seen Balls of Fury? Yes, Balls of Fury is that movie that has a, a table tennis theme, a ping pong theme. <clears throat> and not only did I watch it, <clears throat> I was there for opening night. Um, 
Let's see. Oleo is good in B. Okay, but there are some un. There are some. Uh -huh. Yeah, we don't allow it in, in the uh, the print version of spelling bee because you have to have five letters. But in the online version of spelling bee, four letter words count. So oleo will appear there. Okay. Yeah, this is a question, a matter that comes up not a lot. Uh, New York Times puzzles rely on particular knowledge base that often prioritizes white dominated cultural references. To what extent do you feel responsibility to diversify the creators that you bring in and what solvers you attract? Yes, I feel strongly about both of those things. That's one reason we did Black Constructors Week this week. Um, it's appropriate because it's the start of Black uh, History Month, but I thought, first of all, this is a way to showcase the increasing number of African American contributors. And second, for the publicity uh, that comes out of this, I'm hoping that African American solvers of the New York Times crossword see this and get the idea to think, hmm, I wonder if I could make a crossword as well. And uh, we would like to see those submissions. And it's not just African American that uh, African American diversity that's increasing in the Times. If you look at the bylines, You'll see uh, East Asian names, South Asians. Um, we have people from all over. And as far as the cultural references and the puzzles, yes, uh, I think we've always done that, but I'm more cognizant of it now than ever. Our group, our editorial team, the hardcore team, core team of five is already quite diverse. I'm 68. Uh, Sam and Joel are in their 20s. Uh, Winna is also in her 20s, and she's the first female in the group, uh, and Tracy, they, uh, they joined our team at the same time. So two of the five are women, um, and one person of color. It's something we think about a lot, you know? Um, the crossword is going to be most popular when it reflects everybody who reads the New York Times, and I'd like to think that everybody reads the New York Times, so we want the crossword to reflect everybody's life and culture. Uh -huh. How do you balance references to older with new? Well, you can kind of uh, sense what I would like to do, which is have a little of everything. I, when I started at the Times as crossword editor in 1993, I was 42 and I was 36 years younger than my predecessor. Everything in the old puzzles, uh, felt old. My feeling was, don't want to get rid of the old, but I want to add the new. Um, and that's been my philosophy all along. So I try not to have too much old or too much young. Of course, rap is part of modern life. Commercial names are part of modern life. TV, movies, rock and roll, all of that. There should be a little of everything in the crossword. I will say this, though, when there are unusually things with unusual spellings uh, there's a higher bar to meet if uh, if you have a name that's strangely spelled and I think it's a name that people won't know there's two tests I have for it first of all uh, I, I want to make sure it really is like crossword worthy like it's something significant something people should know and second if it's a name I think people won't know I'll try to make sure that the crossings are fair so uh, the answer is still gettable. Let's see. Uh, many of the cultural clues refer to 50-year-old TV shows of no particular merit. Well, I don't know. Try not to have too much of that, but you know, there are some things, uh, Opie, O-P-I-E. I don't know if you think that's of cultural merit or not from the Andy Griffith show. Um, sometimes names continue because they are familiar through crosswords. People have been doing crosswords for so long, they know Opie, for example. Whereas if Opie had never appeared in a puzzle and then someone tried to put it in for the first time now, I'd think, what the hell is Opie doing in this? That hasn't been on TV since the 1960s. Um, but uh, because it's appeared in crosswords so long then it's sort of grandfathered in. There are terms I'm trying to get rid of uh, long ago, I got rid of SLA, used to be a, a, a staple of crosswords, the Symbionese Liberation Army. You know, if you uh, 
Uh, remember of Patty Hearst's abduction in the 1970s, those initials were common and they appeared in crosswords. Uh, and that's something I don't think I've ever allowed. I'm trying to phase out SST for the supersonic transport. I don't think I've used or allowed that in a crossword for several years. Uh, that used to be something people knew. Now, I don't think people know it. Um, and uh, what's the name of, I'm blanking out on the initials for the Star Wars program uh, uh, for, uh, for the missile defense program. That used to also be very common. And, uh, and, and nowadays, uh, I don't think those initials are common enough. In fact, I can't even remember them right now. <laughs> Yeah. Has auto check always been a fee? Oh, that's not a, no. uh, here's something way, way we, uh, SDI. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. SDI. I will, I can't say I will never allow SDI again, but I'm going to try very hard to not to use SDI. Yeah. All right. We got word games. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. So if I could uh -huh. just have yeah. everybody stop your gotcha. chit chat. Right. In between for now, we're going to go move on to Will's. Um, uh, we're going to see if this works without him being able to hear me. Um, but if everybody could just keep the chats to answering what weird questions uh, Will is about to give us, that would be hugely helpful. And um, so the, the back and forth, we're just going to have to clear that for a little bit. Okay, everybody? But let's go and have some fun. So to me, okay, here we go. Uh, here's the first puzzle. Uh, I brought a couple puzzles for you. This one's not too hard. I'm gonna read you some sentences. Each sentence contains two words, which you can change one letter in the word to get a, to name a world capital. For example, the rigs are carrying maracas directly from the factory. There's my sentence. The rigs are carrying maracas directly from the factory. The answer would be Riga, which is one letter change from rigs, and Caracas, which is one letter change from maracas. Now I'm going to read the sentences. You should not put, uh, I want you to uh, type the answer, but I don't want you to type the answer until you get them both. Okay, don't type just one. You got to get them both in order to enter your answer. All right, here's number one. A light shade of sienna would be quite pretty. A light shade of Sienna would be quite pretty if you know the two world capitals that are each one letter apart from words in that sentence. Type them out. A light shade of Sienna would be quite pretty. Let's see who's smart in this audience. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, yeah, William Toby. No, no, Meredith, Meredith Smith is first with Vienna and Quito. Excellent. Meredith, take a bow. Here's number two. Okay, everybody, stop now. <laughs> is a kind of robe worn by ancients. A tunic is a kind of robe worn by ancients. A tunic is a kind of robe worn by ancients. There we go. Uh huh. Robert Moy is first with Tunis and Rome. That's correct. Tunis is one letter change from tunic, and Rome one letter change from robe. Excellent. Look at, the, look at these answers pouring in. we got so many smart people in this audience. Here's your next one. Does the auto dealer have spare parts for an Acura? Does the auto dealer have spare parts for an Acura? Once I'm more. I'm so glad that I can't do these. Does the auto dealer have spare parts for an Acura? Yes, Glenn Ryan, who is a multi-time champion of the Westport Library Crossword Contest, is first with the answer with Paris and Accra. Paris from parts and uh, Accra from Acura, and Accra being the capital of Ghana. And the answers are pouring in. <laughs> it looks like in the comment section, it looks like it's stuttering, stuttering. But uh, <laughs> OK, here's your next one. The ad man planned a whole campaign for handy wipes. And in case you don't know, handy is H-A-N-D-I. The ad man planned a whole campaign for handy wipes. 
the ad man planned a whole campaign for handy wipes. Let's see how you do on this. All right, Eric is first with Aman and Hanoi. Excellent, Aman Jordan. And uh, no, I got the hey, Eric is for and uh, Hanoi is one letter from my handy is right. All right, guys, you're getting good. Here's your next one. The young wizard had his cape torn by Merlin. The young wizard had his cape torn by Merlin. Here it is once more. The young wizard had his cape torn by Merlin. Let's see who. All right. We have an answer from Glenn Ryan again. It's Cape Town. That was a little tricky. I didn't warn you. Uh, uh, Cape Town is two words, just as Cape, uh, uh, just as Cape Torn is uh, two words. And uh, Berlin is one letter change from Merlin. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. All right. Here's your next one. Europe has been devastated by the plague several times. Europe has been devastated by the plague several times. Europe has been devastated by the plague several times. Who is first to get this? Europe has been devastated by the plague several times. Yes. All right, Jan O'Sullivan, she is correct. Uh, the uh, plague is easy, making Prague, Czech Republic. The tough one is Bern, Bern, capital of Switzerland. One letter changed from Ben. So sometimes it's just that little innocuous word that you have to pay attention to. I like to play tricks like that. Here's your next one. Oddly, the reference work omitted Alf Landon and Sonny Liston. Oddly, the reference work omitted Alf Landon and Sonny Liston. Oddly, the reference work omitted Alf Landon and Sonny Liston. All right, we have a bunch of answers. Al, uh, they're jumping up. I can hardly uh, Kang uh, Kango Kangahuala is right. London for Landon and Lisbon for Liston. All right, I got one more of these, and then I got another puzzle for you. And uh, uh, here's your last one of these. Can San yeah. Can Salvador Dali get a limo to his studio? Can Salvador Dali get a limo to his studio? One more time. Can Salvador Dali get a limo to his studio? Yes. Uh, yeah, the first is Emily Greenberg. All right. Way to go, Emily. And the answer is indeed San Salvador, uh, which is... Uh, deceptively hidden inside Can Salvador. I want you to think of Salvador Dali as a unit, but you actually have to think of Can Salvador as the unit, and then uh, Lima from Limo. All right, I think we're ready for puzzle number two. And here's something that I think is too hard and too complicated for radio, so you will never hear this on NPR. I made it for NPR, but I don't think it works. But you guys are so smart that uh, I think this works for you. So here's how it works. Uh, the answer is a two-word phrase in which the second word is a reduplicative word, like claptrap. So it's like sort of a compound word where the two parts rhyme. And the first word in the uh, phrase will rhyme with the parts of the second word. Is that clear? Wow. Here's another reason I will never use this on NPR. I, it's very hard to explain. Uh, for example, though, let me give you an example. Complete failure of a movie about love intended to make you laugh, okay? Complete failure of a movie about love intended to make you laugh. And the answer is bomb rom-com. A bomb rom-com. So that last part is a compound that rhymes, and then the first word will rhyme with the parts of the second. Hope you got that. Here's number one. Dark colored bag for a hiker. A dark colored bag for a hiker. 
Dark colored bag for a hiker. Yes, Emily Greenberg. Yes, Emily, good going. It's a black backpack. You're onto it. Number two, a lively party during an old Chinese dynasty. A lively party during an old Chinese dynasty. Lively party during an old Chinese dynasty. Uh, yes, and it's only, uh, and Stacy is, uh, no, no, let's see who's first. Uh huh. Eric Maddy. All right. Eric, you're in uh, California still? Or you're somehow in the East? Uh, Ming Wingding is correct. Good. And Evan got that. Kathleen, Judy. Excellent. Ming Wingding is right. Number three. Imposing place for a musical group to play. An imposing place for a musical group to play. Yep. Eric's in California. Yep. An imposing place for a musical group to play. Grand Bandstand is right. Congratulations, Robin. <laughs> Doug also got it. Dustin, Stacy, Margie, Vanessa. Excellent. Here's your next one. VIP around a ship's jail. VIP around a ship's jail. A VIP around a ship's jail. Yes, Howard Fetner. Congratulations, you got it. It's a, it's a brig bigwig, a brig bigwig. Yep, lots of answers coming in. Here's your next one. A pre-kindergartner who's a VIP. A pre-kindergartner who's a very important person. Pre-kindergartner, pre-kindergartner who's a VIP. A Todd Hotshot, yes, Eric is first in. Probably a fast typist, too. Boy, look at these answers coming in. Good going. Here's your next one. When your big money comes in between April and June. When your big money comes in between April and June. When your big money comes in between April and June, that is correct. And Emily is first again. Emily, you are sharp. It is a May payday. Congratulations. And I'll give you uh, one more of these. Um, <clears throat> give you one more of these. Uh huh. Which one to give you? How about a, a lame brain from London? A lame brain from London. A lame brain from London. Yes, I see it. It is a Brit nitwit, which would be Annie. Annie, I think, in, are you first? They're coming in so fast I can't see. Annie was near the top. I can't remember. I'm not sure who was number one. Yeah, look at these answers, Kevin. That's great. All right. I uh, Do we have time for one more puzzle? Hope, hope we do. Jennifer, I'm going to do, uh, do we have time for one more? One, one more. Yep, okay. we have time. And here's how this one works. I'm, I'm going to give you a word or a phrase. And the object is to find a country name reading in left to right order letters in the word or phrase I give you. For example, if I said franchise, and if you were looking for a six letter country, you would name, you would say France. Uh, you would drop the H-I-S and the remaining letters in order spell France. Okay, all the answers here are seven letters long. And your first one is algebraical. A-L-G-E-B-R-A-I-C-A-L. -E -A -A You're looking for a seven-letter country reading in left to right orders, left to right order, inside algebraical. Oh, man, look at the answers. Whoa, okay, I can't even tell who was first there. You guys are so good. Number two, parliamentarian. Seven-letter country, parliamentarian. Some people are experiencing lag. Yeah. For the people who sure are there's anything experiencing, you can do about that. Yeah. For the lag, if you could um, try uh, just uh, M resetting is your... first. Oh. 
and that is indeed right. Parliamentarian hides Armenia. Congratulations to M, Scott, Margie, Natalie. Number three. Number three is accusatorial. Accusatorial. A C C U S A T O R I A L. Accusatorial. Yes, it's a question. It's not a matter of solving fast, it's a matter of typing fast. Austria, Emma's first again. Emma's experiencing no lag, clearly, and uh, Emma's a fast solver, too. All right, here's your next one. Confrontational. 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 Yes, we have an answer. It's from Stacy. Stacy is first with Croatia. We're looking for, is Ontario in there? No, Ontario doesn't quite work. The R is in the wrong spot, and that's not a country anyway. Uh, Croatia is the correct answer. Here's your next one. Testimonial. T-E-S-T-I-M-O-N-I-A-L, testimonial. Yes, look at all the answers, Estonia. I couldn't, uh, there's so many, I can't tell who was first there. Okay, uh, this one, I think, is the first one that does not end in I-A, <laughs> interestingly. It's a very common word, uh, uh, country name ending. Uh, your next one is disgraceful. It's a six-letter answer. Six-letter answer. Six-letter country inside disgraceful. And yes, Emily Greenberg is first with Israel. That is correct. We can tell people are trying to type fast because Robin had the right answer, clearly, but she's typing so fast. <laughs> Came out as Israel. Um, your next one is Traffic Warden. Traffic Warden. There's a six-letter country in there. Traffic Warden. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, Meredith is first with with Taiwan is correct, and Rwanda, that doesn't work, does it? Not quite. Uh, Taiwan is correct. <laughs> All right, um, we got two more. This one's so easy. Get ready to type really fast. Return key, return key. Yes, the answers are coming in so fast. <laughs> the answer is indeed Turkey, yes. You don't have to drop many letters for that. All right, here's your last one. It's also not very hard. Plug and play, like a game that's plug and play. Six letter country. Six letter country inside plug and play. All right, we have an answer from Jennifer. Jennifer is correct with Uganda and uh, Gary and Chris and Stacy, Kathleen, Doug, and many others. Congratulations. All right. Well, those are the puzzles I brought. And uh, you are all geniuses. I certify you all geniuses. Um, and uh, Jennifer, are you, are you going to explain how the... Uh, let me... Uh, can I... Uh, let me uh, say one thing before we introduce the before you introduce the tournament puzzle. It's from the 2007 American Crossword Puzzle Tournament. I said it was by Mike Shank. And uh, this year's tournament is scheduled for the last weekend in April. It's always held in Stamford, Connecticut. But because of the pandemic, uh, we're not and with this year. So I'm planning an online only tournament. And here's how it's gonna work. I would like and online, a virtual ACPT to be as close as possible to the real one, which means the same number of puzzles, 
as many activities as we can do that are the same and uh, also social interaction. So Friday night, there will be warm up puzzles and games. Saturday, there will be six puzzles uh, presented online. And uh, of course, it will be solved via computer rather than on paper. Then the big, uh, the big change, the interesting thing is on Sunday, I'm planning to make this a prize competition. There will be prizes. I'm uh, right now, tentatively, I'm planning a thousand dollar grand prize. And how do you have prizes without people, without the possibility of people looking up answers or getting outside help? So here's what I'm going to do. My plan is, I'd love to hear your opinions on this. Uh, I've only shared this idea with a few people so far. But on Puzzle 7, if you want to be in the running for a prize on Sunday morning, you have someone film you solving the puzzle. And when the uh, round is over, we'll look at the, we'll take the top 10 solvers. We will ask to see the films that they, they have done and uploaded to us. So we'll see that there is nobody around giving help to you as a solver, that you weren't getting help from uh, online or in any other way. And those people will be invited to play off on the final puzzle Sunday evening while everyone watches. I think that's work. I think that will work. And uh, if anyone has any uh, reason why that would not love, why would that would not work, how people could still cheat, or some, just why that would not work, let me know. I would love to hear. OK. So wow. Jennifer, take it away. Great. Thank you so much, Will. This has been so much fun. Um, I know that it, the sound issue and the lagging has been a little weird, but uh, we'll figure this all out next time. Hopefully we'll be in person. So for all of you at home who have been waiting for the puzzle, so you are going to get a link. You, it's been sent to you in email and it will be here on this page very shortly. The uh, the password is capital all in the clues with an exclamation point that will be typed in. Um, this will open your Adobe document. We are asking that you complete the puzzle within 20 minutes of downloading and printing. Please do not use outside references. And this is, of course, on the honor system. So we're just trusting the fact that you have timed yourself for the 20 minutes. When you're done, you're going to email me at jkeller at westportlibrary.org with the subject line crossword in the answers, uh, the crossword in the subject. Um, please answer just numbers 17, 25, 45, and 59 across. Again, that's 17, 25, 45 and 59 across. Um, and those who have all four of the, all correct of those four will be put in a random drawing for a crossword puzzle book collection. So hopefully um, we'll be able to do that. Now give me some time because it might take me a little while to get through everything. Um, so I'll have an announcement at the end. Again, my email address, which I realize is, a, is typed in slightly wrong here, it's jkeller at westportlibrary.org. Um, we hope that the, pass, uh, the password is all in the clues, one word with an exclamation point. This is also in an email that you have gotten. Um, again, my email address is jkeller at westportlibrary.org. And without further ado, we are going to let you all go and have fun with this. So thank you so much. And we really appreciate you all joining us for this event. Thank you so much. And we will see you next time. <laughs>